Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. We present Face Forensics Plus Plus, learning to detect manipulated facial images. We are confronted today with potentially manipulated visual content in almost any digital medium. Images and videos, particularly of human faces, play an important role. However, with current methods from computer vision and graphics, videos of politicians or news speakers can easily be altered. Face Forensics Plus Plus analyzes both manual and automatic detection methods and proposes a robust detection approach using a novel dataset. Since news speakers and journalists are likely to be prominent targets of video manipulation, we use corresponding videos downloaded from YouTube to create a video pool of pristine footage. Based on this dataset, we use state-of-the-art manipulation approaches to create altered videos. The two main manipulation categories are face replacement and facial reenactment. Face swap is a lightweight approach that extracts the face region of one image, places it into another, and can be run on smartphones. We also consider deep fakes, which is a learning-based face swap approach based on two autoencoders with a shared encoder. It uses Poisson image editing to merge the manipulated face with the image. The facial reenactment category is covered by face-to-face, -face, which transfers the expressions from a source actor to a target actor while preserving the target actor's identity. Using these manipulation methods, we created a database with 1.4 million altered images based on 500,000 pristine images. For a realistic scenario, we consider three different video quality levels, raw, high, and low quality. Based on this dataset, we evaluate the detection performance of human observers and automatic approaches. In a user study, we asked human observers to detect fake images randomly selected from our database. The ability to detect fakes decreases with lower video quality. Instead of such a manual detection, we propose a new method to detect fakes automatically. Rather than use the entire image as input, our approach uses a state-of-the-art model-based face tracker. This information is used to normalize the image input. Using this input, we evaluate multiple classification methods. Here we show the results of our detection pipeline based on exception net in comparison to the baseline implementation which does not use any domain knowledge. We are able to reliably detect fakes of low video quality. We can also use our pipeline to classify the used manipulation method. Another important task in the field of digital media forensics is the per pixel segmentation of manipulations. We can see that our method is able to robustly detect these regions. We have introduced Face Forensics Plus Plus, a domain-specific detection approach that is trained on a large dataset of more than 1.5 million manipulated images. We have made this dataset publicly available to the digital forensics community to improve manipulation detection, classification, and localization of fakes and images. Thank you for watching. Here is my source video of my face. The more structure, the more variations I can give the program with my face, the more the program can learn what happens. One of the issues people have said is like, hey, I deep faked this person, but they don't blink at all. And that's because they don't have any frames for it to learn where the eyes are closed. You need to make sure you provide it with all these different poses, all these different profiles and perspectives. And now I'm going to be putting it on Ren here. So once I'm ready to go, once I have my two video clips, I need to extract the faces. The program's going in and actually doing some facial recognition. Here are the eyes, here's the nose, here's the mouth. Just to isolate the face and align it. Once I've extracted the faces, I need to train the program into how the faces work. The faces on the left are the ground truth, so to speak. They are my face from a picture. The blurry thing next to it is the program going through iteration by iteration by iteration, looking at the pictures and trying to learn and trying to match it. And the closer it can get its artificially generated image to the actual ground truth image, the better it's doing. Little by little, the videos become clearer and clearer. Then we have Ren, his ground truth of his face, and the synthesized version of his face. And then on the far right, we see the computer trying to recreate my face based on Ren's structure. So if Ren's making a funny face with his mouth open, the computer's trying to go, okay, what would Nico's face look like with the mouth open? And it's trying to put my face into that pose. 
Basically, anytime Bren's expressions don't match things that I've done, the computer's having a hard time filling in the gaps. It needs a little more training as to what that looked like. So I could go back and I could try to find more pictures of me in that pose. I could just take more pictures. Anyway, it should clean that up. For the sake of this test, I'm not sure. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. Jordan Peele created this fake video of President Obama to demonstrate how easy it is to put words in someone else's mouth. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. Not everyone bought it, but the technology behind such frauds is rapidly improving, even as worries increase about their potential for harm. This is your Bloomberg Quick Take on Deep Fakes. Deep fakes, or realistic looking fake videos and audio, gained popularity as a means of adding famous actresses into porn scenes. Despite bans on major websites, they remain easy to make and find. They're named for the deep learning artificial intelligence algorithms that make them possible. Input real audio or video of a specific person, the more the better, and the software tries to recognize patterns in speech and movement. Introduce a new element like someone else's face or voice, and a deep fake is born. It's actually extremely easy to make one of these things. There were just some supposed, you know, breakthroughs from academic researchers who work with this particular kind of machine learning in the past few weeks, which would drastically reduce the amount of video you need actually to create one of these. Programs like Fake App, the most popular and widely available for making deep fakes, need dozens of hours of human assistance to create a video that looks like this, rather than this. In August, researchers at Carnegie Mellon revealed software that accurately rendered not just facial features, but changing weather patterns and flowers in bloom. This advance is not yet available to the public. But with increasing capability comes increasing concern. You know, this is kind of fake news on steroids, potentially. Um, we do not know of a case yet where someone has tried to use this to perpetrate a, a kind of fraud or an information warfare campaign, or, or for that matter, to really damage someone's reputation but it's the danger that everyone is really afraid of. In a world where fakes are easy to create, authenticity also becomes easier to deny. People caught doing genuinely objectionable things could claim evidence against them is bogus. Fake videos can also be difficult to detect, though researchers around the world and at the U.S. Department of Defense have said they're working on ways to counter them. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.